Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. An opinion poll, or as the media calls it, a poll, is a survey of public opinion. Opinion polls are designed to represent the opinions of a specific group of people. This is done by asking a series of questions of a small group and then making an educated guess about the opinions of a larger group. Dr. Kenneth Warren is a specialist in the area of, pol of political polling. He is the president of the Warren Poll, an organization which has been conducting surveys for a long list of clients since 1980. Dr. Warren is also a professor of political science at St. Louis University. He is the author of In Defense of Public Opinion Polling, which has received international acclaim since its release in 2001, Administrative Law in the American Political System, originally published in 1982, and was the chief editor and contributor to the Encyclopedia of U.S. Campaigns, Elections, and Electoral Behavior, Volumes 1 and 2. In this half hour, Dr. Warren and I will be discussing the science of political polling. Kenneth Warren, welcome to the conversation. Good to be here. So let's define what is uh, scientific polling versus uh, I go around and ask the first 10 people um, about their day. Scientific polling is representative polling. So you, in order for polls to be accurate, they have to be representative. Of uh, what? Representative of the public, the your population universe, they call the, it. So the, in other the words, the three hundred some million Americans. Or well, that's right. You know, whatever population universe you're talking about, Madison okay. County or the state of Illinois or the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, how do you go about figuring um, the people you're going to talk to, and their opinions are going to reflect on this larger group? For example, if you were going to be doing a poll to determine the feelings of St. Louis County residents about whether they should merge with St. Louis City or not. Well, I've actually done that poll okay. several times. Right, good, <laughs> then that makes it easy. How do you go about, well, how many, first of all, how many people would you involve in question asking to get a representative opinion? Five to 600, and you would choose them randomly from the population universe. That means everyone in the population universe, all adults, 18 years and over, would stand an equal chance of being selected, theoretically. They mm -hmm. don't really, but theoretically, they stand an equal chance of being selected. The, the, it used to be that when you used uh, phones, hardline phones, when everyone had them before cell phones, it was really easy to get a list of, of hardline numbers and randomly select from a database the random numbers, and then you would be able to randomly reach cell, uh, 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 hardline phones and uh, you would get a representative sample, really pretty much guaranteed. Because really? what you're doing is assuming nothing about the population universe, you're just randomly selecting people from a database that has all of these um, phones in, in the directory. Well, let me ask this, I mean, how, I guess it's anything's possible where you select 500 white people, mm -hmm. 500 black people, 500 Jews, <laughs> you know, 500 Catholics, how is it that you're so certain that the 500 that are picked at random have enough randomness to them to really represent the opinion of everybody in the county? Because you're assuming nothing about the, the, uh, the database. In other words, you're getting all the phone numbers, let's say, of St. Louis County. That means that you really can't not get a representative sample when you uh, use a CAN program, a computer-generated program, to randomly select from that database. You are automatically going to get the, the, the percentage of uh, African Americans. For instance, the African Americans about 23% of uh, St. Louis County. You're mm -hmm. automatically going to get that. And by the way, when you finish your poll, one of the things you, you want to look at right away are the demographics. Uh, because you're going to ask normally at the end of a poll, uh, can you please identify your race? You know, white, black, other, and so forth. And, and uh, all other demographics that you want in the poll. And you will see that, that the poll is amazingly accurate. 
Uh, normally, you need to wait for two things. Now, waiting I can discuss, but you need to wait for two things. And when you say wait, W E I G H T, yes. <laughs> wait for two things, right. and that is, you nor pollsters normally get too many females and too ma and too many older people. Mm -hmm. So it's it's that's a real easy thing to do to wait for. So what you do is you want to include more younger people, and so the younger people you've already interviewed, you give them a greater weight. You might 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 multiply. You might get like three and a half percent under under thirty uh, years. Old, that would be from 18 to 30. So what you would do is you just put a weight factor in there where you multiply the three and a half percent by two, and that would give you seven percent, which is about all you get, by the way, in a population universe. Uh, um, when if you want to get the proper demographics, all you want is about seven to eight uh, percent under 30 years old. Now let me ask. This is truth telling time. When you go back, you've done a poll. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then when you go back and you look at the results when they mm -hmm. actually do the vote, mm -hmm. how often does your polling and the final vote match up? Almost always. My, my average error has been 0.8. And where I'm really, where, where I, I do exit polls, and I've done them for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, the St. Louis Beacon locally, and even CNN, and uh, around the United States for different groups. And I've measured my average error. My, my average error has been 0.8. And sometimes it's been, you know, obviously better if the average error, error is 0.8. Now that's uh, that's interesting because so many people um, that I have talked to, you know, like uh, 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 that they sometimes they actually think, and I've heard this, and I'm sure you have too, that polling is done in order to create a certain groundswell for an idea or a candidate. Um, What's that called? A well, that's called push, push polling, poll. and, yeah, and, and that's actually well, that. push polling isn't really polling. In fact, uh, Apport condemns it. That's the American Association for Public Opinion Research, which I'm a member of. So that's not you or your or your those members. You're you're not doing that. Who would be who would be doing these? Oh, it's polls? it's sleazy stuff. I mean, candidates will do it, and and they're they're not going to get any legitimate pollster to do it. That's so unethical that in fact, Apport has on its website. Uh, uh, a notice about that and if you uh, are a victim of a push poll, in other words you've been called or you're opposing candidate and you know you've been a victim of a push poll, uh, then you're supposed to contact APOR and APOR will, will try to stop it. Uh, it's very unethical because essentially uh, what they do, uh, what candidates do, is they try to uh, essentially run a campaign through it, uh, a, a negative campaign through calling. And they'll say, you know, um, candidate X, if you knew candidate X was, you know, beat uh, uh, his wife and did this and this, would you vote for this candidate? I mean, it's just terrible stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that's an example, that's a classic example of a push poll. Normally the push polls are more subtle than that, but they usually give a negative introduction to, and then ask if, you, if this were true about the candidate, would you vote for that candidate? The purpose of a push poll is simply to, is to score points for yourself and, and by denigrating the, your candidate. Has there been any evidence that push polling has worked for a candidate and therefore others continue to follow in that uh, in that footstep? Well, yeah, there, there have been a lot of evidence that they've worked. In fact, if you go way back to the primary in 2000 between Bush and McCain, the push polls were used then. And the push polls were used to, to uh, in, for instance, South Carolina primary, were used to beat up McCain, something fierce. And uh, McCain, you know, uh, it took him years to recover from from that. It's 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 terrible thing for for you know to, to know, if you're the candidate to know that that uh, the victim of it to know that you're being beaten up like that and all sorts of terrible things are being said about you in in what's supposedly a poll. Uh, the other thing is is that uh, in a push poll, they the uh, the candidate doing the push poll will literally call hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands, even tens of thousands of people, because the purpose is not to get a, a, a representative sample. The pur purpose is to just make as many calls as possible. Campaigning. To, yeah. It sounds to, like it's, to, it's to, just uh, another form of you know, campaigning. To, to, get the, uh, to get your opponent. I see. Now, there is a poll which is done, I guess, at the very beginning of a campaign mm -hmm. just to see where people... A benchmark poll. A benchmark poll, okay. Mm -hmm. 
and then there is something called the tracking pole, which mm -hmm. I guess you're mm -hmm. tracking from the benchmark what the trend is as people are seeing commercials? Well, no, not exactly. A benchmark poll, I used to be Dick Gephardt's pollster, and he, he used to call it a get-to-know-your-district poll. A benchmark poll is a basic poll that's carried out at the beginning of, a, of an election cycle, like, for instance, now for the November election. Mm -hmm. it, it, it allows candidates to get a, you know, a fairly decent handle on the district. What are the, what are, what's important? What would they like to know? Well, you know, right. What, what, are, what, what are the voters thinking at this time? And by the way, at this, in a benchmark poll, normally you, you interview even non-registered voters and see that's different than in a tracking poll later where where you're only interested in uh, interviewing registered voters because non-registered voters uh, can't vote but at this time registered uh, non-registered voters will have an opportunity still naturally to to register and vote so you don't want to really exclude them from a, a benchmark poll but a benchmark poll uh, simply uh, tries to give you a benchmark on your district to tell you all the basics about the district. You know, what are people thinking at this time? You know, do they think the country's going the right direction, wrong direction? What are like they like, for instance, in Madison County? What do they what do they like in Madison County? What do they don't like in Madison County about, you know, let's say the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, you know, uh, what the county is doing for them and so forth. I just completed one actually of Madison County. And those are the kind of questions that you were asking? That's correct. You know, we wanted to know, you know, what voters like most about, let's say, uh, what the Democratic Party was doing for Illinois, or what the Republican Party, or more for Madison County, uh, what issues they thought were most important to them as Madison County residents and so forth. May I ask what it is that people were most interested in Madison County? Alone? Well, I think you could see, sometimes you pretty much guess, and that's one of the things people don't like about polls. They say, well, I could have told you that. In other words, the economy, jobs. Yeah, but, I could have but, told you. But, but, but now there are certain things there are that are, other, there are, other there things, are things that, that are unique to Madison yeah. County voters that, that you would want to play up uh, in, in uh, 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 your campaign, if you're campaigning for office, things, things that, that Madison County residents in particular are sensitive about, such as tax issues and things like that. Well, that uh, levy in the levy district, mm -hmm. you're familiar with that issue? No. Oh, well, then we won't. <laughs> there, there, the... Uh, Remember, I'm, I'm from the uh, from Missouri, <laughs> from side. From Missouri right. side, and I'm, I'm yeah. not up on well, all Well, there are levees issues. which protect Metro East mm -hmm. from the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. and oh, oh, that issue. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, okay. that okay. issue. Okay. I and thought you were talking about tax oh, levies. Oh, no, yes. not tax levies. I'm talking about <laughs> physical levies. Okay, you're right. And so they had to pass a, um, uh, a little tax mm -hmm. in order to fund the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, somebody's got to pay for mm -hmm. rebuilding right. these, right. Uh, these physical levies. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, that might be... You know, I, I don't know if you, obviously you didn't do any of the polling on that, no. but that would have been a real specialized poll, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. That's yes, it would. And candidates will hire you, or, or uh, by the way, you said at the beginning of the show that I do political polling. I do a lot of polling. Most of my polling is not political. Most of my polling is for like universities, uh, particularly cities. Um, now, so, what would a university or a city be interested in? Well, for instance, I've done several for, for universities where they want to know about what's, what uh, students want in their curricula. Uh, now, let me ask you something. As a professor, do you really, do you think it's incumbent upon the university to figure out what a student wants and give it to them like candy? Or that as a professor, you know what they need and give it to them like broccoli. Oh, oh. Let me tell you, the, the different universities that I, that I uh, poll for, they're competing for students. And you hear their advertisements on radio. So they want to know what's appealing, uh, uh, can be appealing about their universities. So, so it's not like when we went to school. It's totally different. It was, it was uh, you know, who cared about students in those days in a way. It was, it was very faculty administrative oriented and the students did what the university wanted or dictated. That's not so anymore. It's, it's, it's really reversed. I mean, you know, student evaluations, but, but the, you know, are very important. And those are surveys. Okay, and so other surveys are carried out as well among uh, parents of, of students, of students, and, and they want to find, uh, the purpose of the survey is to find out how the university can tweak its, its curricula to please the students, more night classes, 
you know, more online classes, which are getting very popular nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, more of this type of class versus that type of class. Oh yeah, the, the purpose is to reach out and try to recruit students by, by uh, giving them something that they want. And the cities that you're, uh, that you're talking to, what, what are they looking for? Well, those for? are called resident surveys or citizen surveys, and, and uh, I do a lot of them. And, and the, the, uh, the purpose of, of a, a city is to find out whether or not, let's say, they, this, the residents want to build this rec center or not. If you build a rec center, what do you want in it? Do you want a, you want a swimming pool or a whole aqua center? Um, uh, how about a golf course? Do you want to maintain the golf course? It, you tell residents it costs a certain amount of money to, to run a golf course. The city is losing a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Do you still want the city to run and maintain this golf course? Or all sorts of questions about that, uh, fire and police. Um, now, how solid is the opinion? In other words, let's say that a city in St. Louis County or in Madison County or St. Clair County, they decide, yeah, we want to build a new rec center mm -hmm. and, and polling says, yeah, we want to have, uh, you know, we want to have a swimming pool in that and, and it's going to cost X number of millions of dollars and everybody's like, okay. Then all of a sudden you get the opposition groups that start mm -hmm. to this. No, 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 no. And then they start running an effective campaign. How successful will that opposition be based upon the information that you've already gathered? Well, that's a great question, by the way, because remember, a poll is only a snapshot in time. Uh, the poll would be very accurate until that opposition group organized. And if the op opposition group was, was uh, well organized and effective, they could change public opinion. That's what presidents try to do all the time. Uh, you know, they, they have, uh, you know, the White House Office of Communications. What do you think the purpose of that, that office is? It's not only a national organization, but I mean, it's national in the sense that it, that it, it has contacts right here in Madison County and over on the, the west side in St. Louis. They, they reach out and they, they, know how, they know how to affect public opinion. So that you can try to change public opinion. And, and uh, some presidents have been more successful than others in doing it. And some mayors, too. As well, well yeah, been, sure. I'm just using successful. presidents as an example, yeah. Right. So, and you said that you're, you do universities, you do cities. What else are you? Oh, I, I, I've done all sorts. I mean, from, I, you know, health, like cars? health, health I mean, do you, organization. Do you, no, no, I don't. I have not done... Uh, uh, commercial uh, polling and actually that mar that kind of market polling is is uh, is uh, very profitable unfortunately I don't do it because uh, the, the the corporations have a lot of money to pay for uh, uh, you know polls but they they uh, or are mar they looking, market surveys. are they looking for the truth or is it another form of push oh no off? hey uh, in my book I note that uh, how important market polling is to them because the the, the, the their motto is uh, uh, know your market or go broke knowing it, getting to know it. Oh no, they carry out uh, polls. I mean, you take a car, you know, car manufacturers, what, what do they want to find out? They want to find out what, what styles, what colors, uh, what horsepower, what size, and everything about cars to, to make sure that when they finally manufacture that car, that that car is going to sell. Mm -hmm. They don't want any, any more Etzels out there, you know. You, know, you can have any color as long as it's black, <laughs> the old uh, Henry Ford ad mm -hmm. adage. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to switch gears on you just a little bit here. I also mentioned at the beginning that you had written a book upon um, the, the subject of administrative law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that book and what it stands for? Well, that's been a, actually a very successful book of mine. It's, it's been, what it's, is administrative it's, it's, law? Administrative law. law is the study of governmental regulation of businesses and people, essentially. And so uh, it focuses on uh, government regulatory agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, from the Patriot Act that regulates, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, people in terms of, you know, authorizing uh, wiretaps or sne sneak and peek searches and so forth uh, to all sorts of other things like that, that that it authorizes in order to try to combat terrorism. But more common groups uh, or regulatory agencies would be like the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, that regulates all sorts of things having to do to, to, uh, uh, to, to the environment. 
Clean Air Act and so forth that tries to, to targets uh, uh, the air and quality and tries to raise the ambient quality standards uh, in the air. Uh, Clean Water Act and so forth, but you've got the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and, and you know all sorts of regulatory agencies, uh, many, many regulatory agencies that uh, uh, work to try to uh, promote the public interest. Ideally, they're they're good, you know, they're good organizations. They're they're used to try to promote the public interest. Well, it used to be, it seems, but of late, there seems to be considerable controversy about the actions of uh, of a number of organizations. I mean, the EPA. Uh, let's see, today's date is uh, June the twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. Although people will be seeing this later. Just yesterday, the Supreme Court had something to say about the EPA and regulations of, uh, of CO2. Mm -hmm. So apparently, this, is, this administrative law stuff, mm -hmm. I call it stuff, uh, has become controversial. Why? Administrative law is, is um, uh, a very political subject uh, because, it's, it, because people are you know, for and against governmental regulations. Most people are for governmental regulations to a point, even arch conservatives. It, it, we argue over to what extent should the government regulate all sorts of socioeconomic and political activities. But go government regulations ideally are needed. Most people uh, in surveys, by the way, uh, say that. And uh, they're against big government in principle. But then when you break it down and you ask, are you for the EPA doing this or that, they're normally for, matter of fact, about 90% of people are for continuing the regulation in education and environment and energy and so forth. Uh, they, they're for funding these agencies at the present or even increasing their funding. Only about 5% of the people in polls are, are normally uh, for cutting the, uh, Get rid the of it. funding. Get the it funding. out of here. <laughs> well, for, for instance, you you, t you take the uh, Affordable Health Care Act. Yes. Okay. You know, you see, you think that all these people are against it, but when you ask whether or not they want it repealed, the vast majority of Americans do not want it repealed. Actually. And um, what what is it in your polling? Do you help them to def do you help those who have hired you to define what it is the public actually wants then? Oh, because there's yeah. si there is, with the Affordable Air Care Act, obviously mm -hmm. there's considerable schizophrenia uh, in America. You just said that there mm -hmm. are many people who want to repeal it, and then there's the ones that they don't like it, but mm -hmm. they don't really want to repeal it. Uh, well, you know, a lot of people, when you mention Obamacare, they don't, they don't like it because they don't like Obama. So that's part of it. So you don't ask it that way. You ask the Affordable Care Act, and a lot of people don't know that the Affordable Care Act is, is, is Obamacare. Is, oh, and then if you ask about the different provisions, what has been shown is that the, the Americans are for every single one of the provisions except the mandate. If you ask them individually, you know, are you for, are you, are you for you know, uh, doing, uh, doing away with, uh, or let's say ex extending uh, coverage to 26 years old, they're all for it. Mm -hmm. um, pre-existing conditions. Do you want to do away with pre-existing conditions? Oh no, I want to be covered for my pre-existing conditions. So when you get to all the provisions, actually Americans are for it, all your viewers can look it up, Americans are for all of those provisions except the, except the mandate. You know, what's new? They mm -hmm. want all everything but they don't want to pay for it. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I, I, that was my next point. We got about five minutes left here and at this point I usually say to the guest, if there's something that we haven't covered that you wanted to talk about, uh, go ahead now. Well, you asked me about polling, and, and uh, the history of polling is, is pretty interesting. Um, polling used to be unscientific, and in the 1800s, uh, polling was carried out first by the Department of Agriculture to, to survey farmers on crops they intended to grow and to what extent they wanted to grow crops and so forth. Um, Abraham Lincoln was actually a, a person who carried out informal polls. He, he, he wanted uh, to measure the pulse of, of, uh, of, of of what he was doing. He, he wanted to measure the pulse of public opinion to try to find out whether or not they liked essentially what he was doing. So he would send as, out- As president? Yeah, you're as president. And he president. would send out informally uh, his people to, uh, to, to poll uh, uh, important people mostly to find out what, what their feedback would be. Um, as polling developed, 
uh, throughout the decades into the 20th century, uh, George Gallup became the first person to, to uh, uh, conduct a scientific poll in 1936, and he took on, at that time, the very prestige uh, Literary Digest that had been predicting election outcomes for a long time. Well, Literary Digest it, it did not conduct scientific polling at all, and Gallup knew it, and Gallup condemned them for it and uh, took them on in newspaper articles, op-ed pieces for quite a while. And of course, Gallup got it right that Roosevelt would win election. the 1936 election. This is and, Alf Landon. and Landon, yeah. Literary Digest, believe it or not, to show what scientific polling is all about and how wrong they did it, they picked Landon. How could they pick Landon? Anyone knows about the, knows about that election knows it was a landslide for Roosevelt. How could they have possibly picked Landon? Well, what they did is they measured. They they took opinion from people who read Literary Digest and people who own cars, and people who own phones. This is during the height of the Depression. Now talk about an unscientific poll. They polled all the wrong people. Scientific polls uh, ensure that you poll the right people. Well, that's why I was asking you way back at the beginning yeah. of this discussion, your 500 people that you're talking mm -hmm. about, how you can be sure that they are that representative. Because you select them randomly. You don't, you don't see, see literary you don't pick digest. Them by cars or Yeah, by yeah literary digest was this. selecting tens of thousands of people. But they were, you would think, wow, that's, you know, the more the better. But no, it's not how many you interview, as George Gallup once said. Uh, it's, it's whether or not the you diversity. interview the right people. Right. The diversity yeah. of who you're talking yeah. to, to get some idea of what people are thinking. And I guess, and then coming back to something else you said, just because they're thinking that mm -hmm. on one particular day doesn't mm -hmm. mean that three months later that their opinion has swung around due mm -hmm. to a different argument. That's right. Gallup, Gallup uh, actually uh, was the first to promote scientific polling, but he did get it wrong at first. I mean, he, he got the election right, but he was still way off in the percentage of the Roosevelt win. Uh, but he carried out what was called uh, quota sampling. And quota sampling uh, is, is difficult, it's very challenging because you, you have to, what he tried to do is, is get, you know, a certain number of, of, of people in, within religious groups, within economic categories and so forth. And that's very difficult to do. Um, <clears throat> it's also called stratification sampling. It's, it's very, very challenging and it's, it's almost impossible to get it right because it's rooted in the assumption that the, that the uh, different uh, groups are actually right proportionally. So you, you, you know, you, you normally try to take that from census data, but as you get well into the census decade, the, 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 that census data will be wrong. And, oh. And so, oh, yeah. so that's, a, that's a problem. Today, as you get to the years five, six, seven. Yeah, right. T today we, meet, we have a lot of challenges because of cell phones, and uh, we have to try to include cell phones in our samples, but cell phones are very difficult to include in samples. But that's not, <laughs> that's kind of complicated to explain. If you're just doing a county, as you know, people who use cell phones within, let's say, Madison County, they're not necessarily people who, uh, who, where their cell phone was bought and their number is Madison County. That's a topic I, I messed up. I wanted to hear more about that, but we'll have to have you back and discuss that in more full detail. Thank you very much for being with us and talking about scientific polling, a very, to me, a very interesting subject. My pleasure. And to my audience, I've been speaking with uh, uh, Dr. Kenneth Warren. He's with uh, the Warren Poll, also with, uh, with St. Louis University. Uh, we're going to upload this to YouTube, uh, so if you want to see it again, go there. Thank you very much.